How can I write data into files on my controller? Here we've got a project already set up with a controller. So the first thing we need to do is to add the according library. So therefore we go to the library manager, click on add library, and we'll want to look for the library Vago app file dir. This library can manage all files and directories on your controller. There is many different functions and function blocks in this library, which we can choose to work with our files and directories. And in this example, I want to show two ways on how you can write a file to your controller. The two ways you can find in program organization units. And the first one is a compact function block. The compact function blocks are one specific way of doing something. In this case, write a file. And uh, this function block is very easy to use, but you can't modify it a lot. So it is one specific use case. If you want to do more advanced programming, you might want to choose the base function block instead, which I will show in the second part of the video, which you can find here in the base folder, file usage, FB general file, which works with some methods to start specific file operations. But let's start with the compact function block, the FB simple write file. I've already prepared a program for this, which is in function block diagram, so we can see the function block easily. So first off, we need to call it, of course. So we just select the function block and select the FB simple write file from the structure. And then we need to declare it. So we give it a name. I will call it write one. Hit OK. And now we can see all the ins and outputs of the function block. Now we want to add variables to those. Normally you would set those in a logical way with your program. In this example, we'll just set them manually to see the work of the function block itself. So first up, we need to open a file. Therefore we have a variable x open, which is a bool variable. Then once the function block is open, we can start a write process with the trigger variable. Note here that this is a var in out variable. So we just set this variable and the function block will reset the variable itself once it's done with writing into the file. So we don't have to set the variable to false afterwards. It's also a bool variable. Then we've got s name, which is of the type file name, which is basically just a string with 255 characters. And in here we want to initialize this variable with uh, the path to where we want to write. In my case, I want to write to the SD card. So I will choose slash media slash SD, which is always pointing to your SD card in your controller. And then we need to select the file name. And I would just call it file name dot txt. You could also write a CSV file or any other file. You just have to declare it in the right way. But the text file is basically the simplest we can do right now. Then next, we need to fill the file with some data. And therefore, we've got a buffer here, which could be a array of bytes. But in this example, I want to make it simple and just use a string instead. So I will declare a string, which is as text. And then we need to combine it to um, put it to the function block. And therefore we need two functions. The first one is the address because this requires a pointer to our buffer. So here ADR is given us the address and we can just put our variable to it. And the second one is how much data we want to write. And in order to figure out how big our string is, we can use the length function and then also combine it with our text. And we could now also have variables in the outputs. But for this example, I would just leave them empty because they will be displayed anyways. So now we can already connect to our controller and start the program. First up, we need to open the file. So I'll prepare the variable here and then write it. And we can see that X is open, changed from false to true. So now the file is open and we can write data. 
The first thing I want to write is just my text. So I write this into my as text variable and then I want to activate the trigger variable. You can see that it immediately changed to false again. So we have been writing the first time now. If we want to add a second line, we can just have a special character, which is $R, $N, which is a line break. And then just my text, new line. And I want to write this to the variable again, and then write the variable into the file. And now I can close my file again, because I'm done with writing into this file. And we can have a look at the file using FTP. Here we can see the SD card. And if I refresh this, we can see filename.txt. Can open this and we can see that there's my text and new line. Of course, if I would go through the process of opening the file again, this file would be overwritten. So we can write a new text into this file. The second way of writing a file is a bit more advanced with the fbgeneral file. You can see that this function block doesn't have any inputs, but rather methods which we can start to do certain things. We can open a file, close a file, write something, we can seek in the file. Uh, but this requires then a strict order in which we execute those operations. In order to do so, I recommend to use uh, structured text in your program and a case structure so you can get step by step through the different uh, steps of your program. In order to write a file, I recommend these steps here. We should have an idle state where we wait until we manually say that we want to write a file. Then we need to open a file, wait until it's opened, write into the file, wait until the data is written. Then we could go back also to the third step again and write more, go again to step four. Then we can close the file. We need to wait until it's closed and then we can go back to the idle state. In order to use the FB general file, we of course need to call it. So we can go into function blocks, Vago app file dear, and select the file from the base folder. Now we don't need to declare any variables here, but we need to declare the function block. So I will copy this and I will call it write to. And then of course I need to call the correct name write to here. And now I will program the case structure. So we can go through the single steps and I will explain how I do this. The program is now put together and we can take a look at the single steps. So first in the idle step, we just wait for a variable x start to be set to true. We set it back to false and go to the first state, which is then opening the file. Here we call the method write to dot open. So if I put in my function block name write to and then the dot, you can see that all the methods of the function block will pop up here. So we can call the method uh, dot open and then we need to give it some inputs. The s name is the file name again, like with the simple function block, the compact one. I will call it my file two. Then we need to give it an access mode, which is basically telling the uh, open method how to open the file. And there are different access modes, which I quickly want to show in the library manager. So with the Vago app file here, you can see that we've got the library Vago types common underneath and here in the file dir folder, we can find the different access mode data types. There is write, read, read, write for random access and then append. And in this example, I want to use append because append is opening the file in a way that you keep the existing data in the file and just you can open it again and write to the back of the file. So that's why I select the pen here. Then we have a synchronization mode, which is just put to regular and X exclusive is put to false. As soon as we trigger this open method, we go to the next state where we wait. 
until the function block is returning exterminated, which is this variable up here. And as soon as this is true, we know the file is opened and we can go to the next state. Of course, you would have an um, also a variable or a state looking for the error variable. So if you get an error, you get into a error routine, which is then handling the error of the file, which I don't have programmed in here. Next, we want to write. And again, we just call a method here. In this case, write string, because I just want to write string again to my file. And we go to the uh, waiting state here. I've got a little bit more complicated because I have a variable write more, which is set to true by default. So if I want to write more, I go back to state three where I write data and I change my text to $r, $n new line to get a line break. And um, then the text new line put in place. Then again, I go to uh, the step four, which is then uh, having the write more variable set to false and um, I reset the text and go to step five where I want to close the file. So here I just call the method close and then in the last step I'm waiting again for exterminated and I'll go back to the idle state. So let's try this now. If I connect to my controller and I start the program, we can write into our file by just setting the x start variable. So I prepare it and then I write the variable and maybe you could see that the i state was uh, going through the different states very quickly. So now we should have opened and written into the file and we can check if we refresh this. Yes, we can see my file is right here, my text and new line. And because we open it in append mode, we can just do it again now, right into the file. You could see maybe again that the state was going through. And if we refresh the file, we can see that we put my text and new line into this file once again. So this is two different methods on how you can write data into a file.